Hello and welcome to the course on literary criticism. In today's session, we will be discussing Virginia Woolf's critical essay, Modern Fiction. This essay was originally published in 1919 under the title Modern Novels and was then revised and republished in 1925 with the title Modern Fiction. Now, before we begin this essay, we will look at the era in which it was written as a work of literary criticism. This was the modernist era uh, which is roughly from 1900 to 1940 that is the first part of the 20th century. Now, the modern era was characterized by several transformations and developments from the preceding Victorian age. The major event that occurred at this time was the first world war. This war was different from any other war that had happened before because of the large scale violence, death, destruction and loss of life that it brought about. Uh, in fact, the generation which lived through the first world war was called the lost generation because a large number of aspiring young men had lost their lives in the war uh, and they left behind their families, their widows and uh, their children who grew up without parents. There was disillusionment, there was displacement and um, a loss of faith in government, in religion, in family life, in um, traditional gender roles, in patriarchal values and other things which had been traditionally taught to the young people of that time. So, the first world war had a strong impact on the way modernists saw the world around them. Uh, it gave them an idea of a world that was changing too fast, a world that was not merely progressing, but was also bringing destruction in its wake. So, though the modern era was characterized by uh, many technological developments and innovations, these developments were not necessarily seen as uh, being for the progress of mankind. These developments could also be deployed for the destruction of uh, human lives and for uh, perpetuating warfare. So, there were other influences on modernist thought. Uh, one of those influences was the theories of the scientist Albert Einstein, who uh, propounded the theory of relativity, which had a deep impact on the way modernists perceive time and history in their narratives. Another significant influence from this era is the psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. Uh, Freudian theories about the unconscious, the subconscious and the inner states of consciousness had um, a great influence on the way a uh, narrative was constructed in modernist novels. Another uh, innovation during this time was the rise of the cinema, which uh, threatened to uh, overtake literature and fiction as the most popular medium of expression. But at the same time, modernist novels uh, also appropriated some of, some of the techniques of cinema, such as uh, the use of montage and vignettes, where the images followed one after the other in a sequence and um, thoughts and images were presented in the form of a snapshot. So, when we look at the characteristics features of the modernist age, we find that the novelists ha felt that the previous techniques of the Victorian era were inadequate for them to deal with their present reality. It was completely uh, inadequate for them to represent the lived realities of the people of the modern age. So, they uh, tried to develop a new form of art and this form of art uh, came to be known as literary modernism. Now, if you look at the chief characteristics of this form of literary modernism, there are several and not just confined to that age. This form of art continued to be practiced uh, for a long time afterwards and uh, traces of it can be found even in some fiction written in the 1800s. By and large, uh, 
Bradbury and McFarlane in their guide to modernism define modernism in art as follows. They call it, I quote, an art of a rapidly modernizing world, a world of rapid industrial development, advanced technology, urbanization, secularization and mass forms of social life. So, we see here that industrialization and the changes that it brought along with it such as urbanization and uh, the development in technology are very important socio-cultural backgrounds to the modernist novel. And this also has led to a form of secularization uh, which uh, could be read as a loss of faith in organized religion. And you also see that the modernists were writing at a time of mass forms of social life. People were increasingly uh, able to connect with each other through the new forms of technology, but at the same time they were also alienated and experienced a specific kind of loneliness and despair brought about by the modern capitalist age. Um, Bradbury and McFarlane continue with their definition of modernism in art. They say this is an art of a world from which many traditional certainties had departed and a certain sort of Victorian confidence not only in the onward progress of mankind, but in the very solidity and visibility of reality itself had evaporated. So, this is very important. Uh, the idea of traditional certainties having departed and evaporated uh, is a very important idea in understanding modernism, because the modernists like people who lead any movement were consciously or unconsciously rebelling against what came before them. And what came before them in this case is uh, the traditions of the Victorian era with its certainty that technology is going to lead to the growth and development of mankind, with its certainty about uh, religion and reality. Modernists were very consciously uh, fighting against this form of uh, realism. But we must not mistake the modernist project as one that is anti-realist. In fact, modernists uh, practiced a form of hyper-realism. They wanted an alternative form of realism, a new form of realism to explain the new reality that they witnessed around them. So, in summarizing the main uh, features of the modernist era, uh, we must also consider the, tech, the innovations in the literary form uh, exemplified by the technique of free indirect discourse or the stream of consciousness technique. Now, the stream of consciousness technique was inspired uh, by psychology. Uh, it is a narrative technique whereby the author presents the thoughts, feelings, perceptions, memories and associations in the minds of the character as it is experienced by them without any explanation, without any external commentary and without uh, adherence to strict notions of time, uh, because the mind does not work that way. So, the mind often fluctuates between the past and the present, it uh, thinks about what will happen in the future. So, this kind of uh, flux uh, in the way the mind thinks is very uh, realistically, meticulously represented in the fiction of modernist writers. And if you look at the distinguishing features of modernist literature, uh, unlike the traditional novels that focused on the social development of character, the modernist novels focused on the individual's psychological being. And while traditional fiction uh, focused on the descriptions of the external in an objective manner, the modernist writers focused on descriptions of the internal uh, consciousness in a subjective manner. And while traditional novels adhered to the linear sequence of time and uh, had a very clear dramatic plot, the modernist novels fluctuated between the past and the present and focused more on the momentary um, fragmented thoughts that pass through the mind of the characters who inhabit these novels. So, having looked at these distinguishing characteristic features, we will begin with Virginia Woolf's seminal essay, Modern Fiction. Woolf's project uh, in this essay 
uh, is to one critique her contemporaries namely H. G. Wells, John Galsworthy and Arnold Bennett. She also sets out to reveal the varying literary ten trends of the 1910s uh, and the 1920s. She also very consciously creates a binary between uh, two kinds of novelists, one group whom she calls the materialists and another group whom she labels the spiritualists. And then she goes on to uh, discuss what she considers to be the proper stuff of friction and she concludes the essay with a discussion of modern Russian writers and the kind of um, influence that they could have on British English writing. So, in the beginning of the essay, Virginia Woolf makes a clear uh, point about the distinctiveness of modern fiction because of the age in which it is written. She cites other writers like Jane Austen and uh, Henry Fielding as being remarkable novelists, as being admirable novelists, but as being writers who uh, were writing from a completely different standpoint given the times in which they lived. So, she seems to distinguish between the novelists of the past and her contemporaries um, because of the difference in their lived realities. And therefore, she believes that the tools that the modern writers have at their disposal are very different from the tools that the traditional uh, novelists had at their disposal to analyze and understand human life and represent it in their fiction. In the second paragraph, she goes on to criticize those writers whom she considers to be materialists. Now, these are writers who were uh, best selling authors at that time, they were quite popular writers. Uh, H. G. Wells novels still continue to uh, be very popular and there are film adaptations being made of his novel even now. Uh, so, Virginia Woolf's criticism of these popular writers is quite uh, courageous, it is quite bold um, and her main reason for critiquing these writers is not their lack of craftsmanship or uh, their skill in constructing plot and storyline and coming up with exciting sensational narratives. She does not find fault with them on any of these points. She just feels that these writers have compromised uh, by uh, trying to cater to the market rather than to find out what she believes to be the proper uh, stuff of fiction. Uh, these writers are not largely concerned with revealing the truth uh, as the modernists would call it. And this is another interesting feature of modernist uh, literature is that these writers while they believed in the fragmentary nature of uh, life and uh, psych psychological being still believed in a kind of unity, they still believed in a kind of a truth um, that would transcend all these all this chaos. So, the more unlike and this is in stark contrast to the postmodernists who celebrated chaos who did not believe that there could be one uh, evident truth that can be distilled. But Virginia Woolf believes that there is a truth which uh, fiction can reveal and which the writers should strive to reach. But neither of these writers who are uh, really popular at this time have uh, found the way to arrive at this truth. So, I quote from Woolf's essay, she says, if we try to formulate our meaning in one word, we should say that these writers are materialists. It is because they are concerned not with the spirit, but with the body that they have disappointed us and left us with the feeling that the sooner English fiction turns its back upon them as politely as may be and marches if only into the desert, the better for its soul. So, uh, the accusation that she levels against these writers is that they are materialists. Um, they are more concerned with descriptions of the external 
material circumstances than with the internal lives of their characters. And um, she says the biggest culprit here is Arnold Bennett because he is actually a really good craftsman and his uh, novels can be compared to a beautiful house uh, that is um, designed wonderfully, but it is a house with no life in it. According to her, Bennett's characters live abundantly, even unexpectedly, but it remains to ask how do they live and what do they live for. Uh, so, the characters are um, well defined, they are external circumstances, their appearance, all of these things are described in detail, but these characters do not ha have a depth of soul. Uh, they act as props for the novelist to construct a great plot um, and that is their uh, sole purpose in the novel. So, Virginia Woolf believes that this kind of uh, characterization is clearly uh, materialist and uh, she then goes on to berate H.G. Wells in a very sarcastic way. Uh, she says, H.G. Wells is a materialist from sheer goodness of heart taking upon his shoulders the work that ought to have been discharged by government officials and in the plethora of his ideas and facts scarcely having leisure to realize or forgetting to think important the crudity and coarseness of his human beings. So, H. G. Wells novels are full of facts, full of information and uh, they are, uh, they can be quite delightful to the reader, but uh, the, the accumulation of data and facts and information she believes is not the task of the novelist, but that of government officials. And uh, as a result of his focus on such things, his characters turn out to be very crude and coarse and uh, you could call them cardboard characters because she says his Jones and his Peters, uh, they have an inferiority of nature, right. This is what, uh, this is Virginia Woolf's critique of the works of H. G. Wells. Um, she then goes on to underline what uh, really offends her about these novelists. If we fasten then one label on all these books on which is one word materialist, we mean by it that they write of unimportant things, that they spend immense skill and immense industry making the trivial and the transitory appear the true and the enduring. So, their main problem seems to be that uh, they make things which are trivial and which are uh, transitory seem like the truth, the eternal truth and this is what Virginia Woolf takes offence with. And she says, uh, though readers might enjoy these novels for the moment, then they have to ask themselves, is it worthwhile, what is the point of it all? Uh, and this uh, seems like a very philosophical question as well. Uh, we begin to wonder about what the point of life is and you have to remember that the modernist age was also a time when existential philosophy in the aftermath of the first world war and before the beginning of the second world war. Uh, was gaining popularity. So, Virginia Woolf's question, is it worthwhile, what is the point of it all is not just uh, for the novel, but also um, a question about human existence. And she feels that in these, in the works of these material, material writers, life escapes, right. Uh, they are so concerned with descriptions of the external that uh, the essence of life is lost. She says, whether we call it life or spirit, truth or reality, this the essential thing has moved off or on and refuses to be contained any longer in such ill-fitting vestments as we provide. So, she believes that the craft uh, of these writers, while they may apply to a different age, do not apply to a modern age and they become ill-fitting clothes or ill-fitting vestments that uh, do not capture the life or spirit of the people living in this age. Now, uh, what could be the reasons for writers not trying to find the essence of life or uh, the truth of art? According to Virginia Woolf, uh, the reasons are very monetary because the writer is a slave to a tyrant. She does not clearly define who this tyrant is, 
but uh, we can read it as her criticism of the market, the market for books and uh, the publishers who put pressure on the writers to produce certain best selling works. And in order to write these kinds of best selling works, the writers have to employ a formula, um, adding and mixing a little bit of tragedy, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of romance and a little bit of sensationalism uh, to create a dramatic plot. And Virginia Woolf feels that uh, this kind of formulaic construction of a novel uh, clearly defy, uh, defies the purpose of uh, true art, uh, true literature. Uh, she says the writer seemed constrained not by his own free will, but by some powerful and unscrupulous tyrant who has him in thrall to provide a plot, to provide comedy, tragedy, love interest and an air of probability embalming the whole so impeccable that if all his figures were to come to life, they would find themselves dressed down to the last button of their coats in the fashion of the hour. The tyrant is obeyed, the novel is done to a turn. So, it is the fashion of the hour that seems to matter, uh, not really an adherence to craft, not really uh, an, uh, a commitment to truth, but rather uh, the uh, following the fashion of the hour is what seems to be the primary concern of these Edwardian writers whom she calls materialists. And she concludes uh, this part of the essay with a very piercing question, is life like this? Must novels be like this? So clearly Virginia Woolf does not think that this is the best that a novelist can do in the modern age. She feels that there is more to life, there is more to literature and that uh, we as readers must ask ourselves these questions in order to encourage writers to produce uh, the best that they can. So what is it that Virginia considers to be uh, the ideal novel to be? Uh, why does she uh, feel that Wells and Bennett and Galsworthy can do better? And if they can do better, uh, what course are they to take, what method are they to employ, uh, what technique are they to follow. So the obvious answer to this question would be uh, the modernist techniques of fiction. But Virginia Woolf does not give us easy answers. In the next session of the essay, she will describe uh, those writers whom she considers to be spiritualists. And uh, these are writers whose work she approves of in comparison to the works of the materialists. Uh, but even then, Virginia Woolf does not tell us that fiction has to be written in this way or that way in order to be considered proper. Uh, she leaves that ambiguous and she leaves the question to the reader. So in the next session, we will discuss uh, and take up this question, is life like this, must novels be like this further? Thank you.